What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to give you my professional gaming opinion on Paradise Killer. Paradise Killer is a game I wish I'd played six months ago, because it would have been an incredibly strong contender for my game of the year in 2020. As it is, I found myself with some free time in my schedule, a great euphemism for being out of work, and decided to tackle some of the games I was interested in but hadn't got around to yet. You know, the infamous backlog. I was just playing it for me, not for a review, but it turns out it's a bloody good game, and I feel compelled to tell you about it. So here's the latest in a series of videos in which I play a game and write about it far, far too late to be relevant. But since when has a little thing like relevance ever stopped me? Paradise Killer. It's... well, it's a lot of things. It's not a game to be pigeonholed into a genre. It's a murder mystery, and kind of visual novel-y. It's a first-person open-world exploration game. It's, I guess, kind of like Danganronpa, but just the investigation bit, and just one huge, complex, meaty case to solve. Let's start at the beginning, and buckle up, because it's nuts. Way back when, at some point in human history, dates around 1000 AD are given, gods presented themselves to humanity. The wiki lists at least 17 of them. Shit kicks off, most of the gods wind up dead, but the first god, Silent Goat, bestows those loyal with power, technology, and immortality. These people are the Syndicate, and they're running the show. They've crafted a series of alternate realities on islands, which always goes tits up and ends with a demonic invasion forcing them to scrap it all and start again on a new island. The ultimate aim, though the how is never well explored, is to resurrect all of the dead gods and restore them to their former glory. Make sense? We're up to Island 24, as of the time of the game, and it has, until very recently, been going unusually well. You are Lady Love Dies, nicknamed the Investigation Freak, and have been in exile since Island 13 when you were deceived by the god Damned Harmony, no relation to Octodad in spite of being tentacles in a shirt, so you've been away for 3,004,769 days, or 8,226 years, and you're a bit out of the loop, which is a nice excuse for some exposition. The Council, the leaders of the Syndicate, have been murdered, every last one of them, and since not only are you good at figuring shit out, as the investigation freak, but also you're basically the only person who couldn't have done it, it falls on you to get to the bottom of it all. You have a laptop named Starlight to help you automatically document everything you find, which is good because there's a lot of stuff. And you basically get given free roam of the island to dig up the dirt on what went down. You can scan crime scenes, interrogate everyone that's still alive, hack into computers to gain access to hidden areas, and solve puzzles to reveal clues, all while absorbing the weird ambience and enjoying the rewards of exploration. And the game absolutely does reward exploration. There's stuff everywhere. Blood crystals are the local currency, because of course they are. Oh yeah, content warning for blood. There's a lot of blood going on, even beyond the murder stuff. It's hella occult. Blood crystals are used to pay for fast travel, buy secrets from Crimson Acid, the Syndicate's secret broker, and purchase drinks from vending machines dotted around the place. There's also bottles of whiskey to collect, which reward you with short, semi-philosophical conversations from a bar in the future on Island 25. There's a shrine to every god, to which you can make an offering of a blood crystal and some of your own blood in order to obtain a stone tablet with a bit about that god on it. There's a little friendly-ish demon named Shinji who shows up in a lot of places to shoot the breeze with you. And also a million other miscellaneous things to pick up, which just give you some insight into the lives of the people of Island 24. Or hoarding trash, as Shinji rightly points out it is. Thematically, it's wild, in case you haven't already deduced. The game dumps some exposition on you at the start and then throws you out into this very unfamiliar world. Hi, welcome to paradise, the world's ending, and may the silent goat walk with you. Now go find us a murderer. Wait, what? Did someone turn over two pages at once? Then you wander down into the world, flanked by colossal brutalist architecture, statues of gods everywhere, traditional Japanese buildings, and so many skulls. Goat skulls, mainly, Natch. It's a weird hodgepodge of styles, and it's not entirely anchored in any one time period either, though it's loosely centred around a modern style, in spite of it being millennia in the future. And yet it also somehow kind of works. It really doesn't take very long at all until you just kind of accept that this is the world. This is what the Syndicate built. It's bizarre AF. 
Yes, there's a reality folding drive spinning over the city generating petawatts of energy, but what of it? Now let's go for a ride in Lydia's sports car before heading to the temple for a nice spot of traditional bloodletting. No biggie. The characters are all larger than life too, with names to match. Dr. Doom Jazz. I cannot stress enough that his name is Dr. Doom Jazz. Is a sexy Scottish cyborg playboy with his own yacht. Crimson Acid is a warrior turned idol blessed by the gods with the head of a goat, of course. Sam Daybreak is a Turkish assassin turned bartender who was killed in battle but didn't die because love, I guess, and lived on as a bright red skeleton who blends excellent whiskey. Plus, there's a bunch more, too many to go through every one. You can hang out with them all in addition to your interrogation, and as you get to know them, they'll open up and you might learn useful things relating to the case. But it's all worth doing anyway, simply because the writing is masterful. Every single one of them contains multitudes, and nothing is ever black and white. It's people and political structures with a messy history stretching back millennia. And of course, everyone loves to gossip. The whole thing is set to a banging soundtrack, too. I don't know what you'd call it. I've seen it described as future pop, synthwave, city pop, ambient jazz and disco. Shrug, I'd, I'd know some of those words, I suppose. All I know is it's great. It's one of those soundtracks you want to listen to after you stop playing, which is always the hallmark of a fantastic one. I did have my concerns that the occult stuff might be a turn off for some players, and I guess for a few it is. But skimming through the Steam forums, I did find one Christian player who'd gone in with reservations and came away not only having enjoyed it, but actually with their own perspective and interpretation of the events, which was different to my own. This again, I think, speaks hugely to the quality of the writing. I do want to see more of this universe. There's so much world building on into bringing us this one bite of it all, and there are undeniably other stories to be told within it. What happened during the Great Betrayal and the Fall of the Gods? Tell us about how LD wound up in exile on Island 13. More, damn it! Also worthy of note is the generous array of accessibility options, allowing you to tweak quite a lot of gameplay elements. Accessibility is so often an afterthought, it's worth commending a developer who goes the extra mile to ensure their game can be enjoyed by as many people as possible. In case you couldn't tell, I really liked Paradise Killer, and I highly recommend checking it out. It is my professional gaming opinion that, had I played it when it came out, it might well have been my game of the year. But who knows, it may yet come to be my game of 2021. Massive thanks to my lovely channel members for supporting me and making review six months late. If you'd like to see your name in the credits too, you can become a member by hitting the join button below, and if you enjoyed this video, you can show your support by hitting the like button, and if you didn't, show your frustration by hitting the dislike button. That's cool too. Either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.